so far, Diagnostics has probably been pretty fun. I mean, how many people love crime scene investigation shows and house? I mean, that's what this is. But this is a very common type of reasoning, down to why did my car break down, or how did Trump win that election, or all of these things. We are always asking these diagnostic questions. Now, things will start to get, a, get more gritty, because you understand the big picture just fine, but what we need to do now is look in greater and greater detail and create new distinctions all over the place so that we can be very careful and articulate in solving such cases. All right, and again, we'll treat this as crime scene investigation, but this is just explaining things. This is just a scientific mindset in general. We just have a fun way of talking about it. All right, so the next thing we need to do is distinguish two kinds of evidence. We will make a further distinction later on, but this is the key distinction. When you're looking at the evidence you've laid out for a case, you see a case, you create the implicit question, you start brainstorming rivals, but if you're being really careful, you lay out all the evidence as premises. Now, there is one major distinction in evidence that we call trace data and non-trace data. Yes, they are complete opposites. The easy definition of trace data, now here's what's going to happen. The weird thing about studying diagnostics is everything you define is defined in terms of other parts of the diagnostic. So there is no completely objective definition. We define implicit questions in relation to rivals and rivals in relation to evidence and so on. And it keeps going back and forth reflexively. So here we come. What is trace data? Trace data is evidence that needs explaining. It is something mysterious that your rivals should try to explain. Notice that language. Should try to explain. Because there will often be trace data that you can't explain, although you can solve the case just fine without explaining it. Whereas there's other cases, other types of evidence that are absolutely vital to explain or you haven't solved the case. For example, if we take the strange tree case, remember the one that was swaying back and forth and seemed to pause? Now, of course, it is trace data that the tree is swaying in this weird rhythmic way left to right. That is something we have to explain. That's very important trace data that a rival should try to explain, and they must. But notice there could be other evidence there that we should also try to explain. For example, the sequence, like how long does the tree pause for? Or what direction is it going? Is it swaying north to south? We should try to explain that, but if we can't, if we find out, oh, it was a truck that was pulling the tree to try to get it out of its roots, and that's why it was going like this, we could say, oh, it's just coincidence which direction it was going. But we should try to explain what the interval was in going back and forth, and maybe it turns out we can't just happened to be that that's, the truck was just trying however it could, and there was no real reason why it was going in that sequence. It was just trying everything possible. Again, so the key distinction is between evidence that we should try to explain and evidence that doesn't need explaining. Or you could say background evidence, evidence that isn't mysterious, but could still be relevant to the case as its background. Now, there is a trick to finding trace data. It's a little weird, but listen to this. There, are, there will be cases where it's hard to tell the difference, and so use this little technique. Here's what you do. For each piece of evidence, you start this phrase. You start the phrase, why is it the case that, and then fill in each piece of evidence. Remember, in your premises, separate each little detail of evidence so we can look at each one in turn. Don't put a bunch of evidence all in one line. So in this case, we would ask, why is it the case that the tree is swaying in these weird aggressive intervals? And you would say, now notice, you ask the question, why is it the case that the tree is swaying left to right in strange intervals? And so to determine if those pieces of evidence are traced at it, we look at our rivals and see if they're trying to answer that question. Why is it the case that the, move, the tree is moving in weird intervals? Look at the rivals. Wind, truck pulling it out, gopher conspiracy, I'm hallucinating. Those are all trying to explain the movement of the tree. 
Now, if we look at the other piece of trace data, why is it the case the tree is moving in two second intervals or why it's swaying from north to south? Our rivals don't directly try to explain that, not explicitly, but they will try to explain that. Those will be included in the story if we articulate the story fully. And so those are trace data, they're just not as important. And then if we fill in other evidence, remember, there is an infinite amount of evidence for any case. Most of it won't be relevant, but some of it might be. So if we say that in that case, I saw the tree looking out of a two-pane glass window, two-pane glass window, you would say, not trace data. That is not evidence our rivals are trying to explain. Our rivals aren't trying to explain why I looked out through a two-pane glass window. That's just background. But look at some other possible evidence. Uh, what if some of the evidence was, it's an oak tree? Uh, some of the other evidence is, it's Tuesday in springtime. Notice all this stuff. A lot of that NTD is going to be background, but notice, some of it could be relevant. What if part of the background was, the tree is diseased? Now, the disease isn't causing this. We're trying, not trying to explain why the tree is diseased. That would be a different diagnostic. Why is the trees diseased? And we'd have different rivals. But notice, could that be relevant to our case? Yes, the NTD that the tree is diseased could be relevant to why someone is trying to pull it out. Why are they trying to pull it out? Because it's diseased and dying. But notice, that is non-trace data in our case, but it does help our explanation. It gives a reason for our rival, and so the rival is telling a good, complete story. Someone is trying to pull out the tree, that's why it explains why it's moving, but that background information helps our story. So again, to find trace data, ask of each piece of evidence, why is it the case that, and fill in that piece of evidence, and see if the rivals are trying to explain it. Trace data is evidence that the rivals should try to explain, and so if the rivals are trying to explain the presence of that piece of evidence, that piece of evidence is trace data. All right, the next skill we need to work on is constructing good rivals. There's a certain skill in articulating your rivals clearly. Here's the key. You want to make sure that your rivals don't create overlap with other rivals. For example, let's say we're, we're faced with a case where a plane, sorry, this is tragic, but I'm just making this up, but these, these, these are events that happen. A plane exploded in midair. Now notice, what is the implicit question? What caused the plane to explode? And notice the rivals you would give. Maybe you would give terrorist attack, uh, mechanical failure, driver failure, um, someone on board blew up the plane. Now notice, if we're not careful, those different rivals could start to overlap and we won't have distinct what we'll call slices of stories. When you think of all the possible explanations for why this plane exploded, there are many thousands of these things. When we're creating rivals, we want to try to come up with discrete groupings of stories that don't overlap with other stories. For example, if your rival said mechanical failure and terrorist attack, notice there is possible overlap there. There is accidental mechanical failure, and then there's intentional, like a terrorist mechanical failure. Maybe what the terrorist did is messed with the fuel line so the plane would explode. Do you get the idea? So you want to be careful when you're setting out your rivals that you make these discrete slices or groups of stories and don't have overlapping stories. Otherwise, it's going to get confusing when you start to articulate your evidence and see which one is the best explanation. All right, all right, give the people what they want, stop with the theory. I'm assuming you'll let me do a little theory if I get to a cool example really quick. All right, so next example. There was a fire, a, a major fire in Northern California, happens all the time, it's pretty normal now. Huge fire, I believe this was Northern California, or maybe Oregon, I'm not sure. But anyway, after the fire was put out, uh, environmental folks and the, range, the forest rangers were investigating the area to try to see what the state of the, the woods were and the trees and if they were going to recover. Anyway, as they're walking through the forest, real true story, 
they come across a guy in full scuba gear, dead. Now, right away, what is the implicit question? Clear. How did this scuba guy diver end up here dead? Clear. Now, as we are starting to give rivals, it gets tricky. And the rivals will start to overlap a lot if we're not careful. Now, notice what we could say. We could say this was suicide. We could say this was a murder. We could say that he died because of asphyxiation from the smoke. He died because he burned to death. Um, he was running from the fire and so became dehydrated and died from exhaustion after the fire. But notice, if we say that, we are starting to get a lot of overlap. Because, for instance, let's say it's suicide, and the particular way he committed suicide was to run into the smoke of the fire to kill himself. Well, so what do we have? An overlap with asphyxiation and suicide. So we're going to have to be careful to either give stories about what the behavior of the person was, or the very clinical cause of death, in order to make sure these stories don't overlap. Now, for fun, let's follow up the story. What ended up happening? Well, they investigated it, and what did they find? They found that the guy was not burned to death, and there wasn't an asphyxiation. In fact, like they found him to be warm, but still wet, so that his temperature didn't go through the roof and kill him just from the heat. What did they find happened? I will pause while you try to solve this one. What happened? When they were fighting the fire, they were doing water drops. So the plane would come down into the river, pick up, scoop up water into the belly of the plane, and then drop it on the fire to put the fire out. This is what put the fire out. Well, what happened? A scuba diver was in the lake and got picked up by the plane when it was scooping up water. And so when the water was dropped to put out the fire, it also dropped the scuba diver. Now, if you are a sensitive person, please know that they, they believe that the scuba diver died, died instantly with the violence of being scooped up. He wasn't in the belly of the plane struggling to get out, fell to his death in flames or anything like that. They do think his death was in, instantaneous when the concussive force of being picked up, but then he was dropped into the forest in the middle of nowhere. Pretty cool, because this was miles from the river, by the way. So, I mean, the miles from the lake. All right, there's your rewarding story. So now let's look at a further nuance with evidence. So far we have trace data and non-trace data. Now we want to distinguish different kinds of trace data. And you already saw this coming, but we talked about the most important trace data and trace data that's less important. Here is the distinction. Central trace data, or CTD, and peripheral trace data, or PTD. What is the distinction? Central trace data is evidence that must be explained for any rival to count as serious. So again, the definitions are always reflexive of other pieces. But so the distinction is central trace data must be explained or you haven't solved the case. It is central to the case, it's central to answering the question, and so any serious rival must explain it directly. Peripheral trace data isn't as essential. You can be a strong rival without explaining all the peripheral trace data. There might be other mysteries in the case, and we might not be able to explain all of them. Those pieces that aren't essential to explain are the peripheral trace data. But keep this in mind. A rival must explain the central trace, central trace data, but it should also in, try to explain as much of the peripheral trace data as it can because that will usually gain strength for that rival. That rival will become more competitive it can, if it can not only explain the central trace data well and likely, but also explain some of the peripheral trace data or as much as possible. All right. Really stupid case. I've just made this up. Okay, so please, it's just pretend. All right, here's the case. You are walking through the Bosque getting some exercise, let's say early in the morning, and you come, up, you come upon dead Jeff. Now, of course, we already have our implicit question. 
Why is Jeff dead? How did Jeff end up dead in the boss game? Fine. Now, you're immediately brainstorming rivals, and here is why you leave crime scenes alone. Because as you're brainstorming rivals, you need to keep looking at the evidence to see if your rivals can explain all the evidence. And as you look more, you'll start to see more background information, and you'll start to see what kind of evidence to look for. So what do we find when we look at the case? Well, as soon as you're shocked and absolutely devastated by my death, you look and you see that I'm wearing a really nice suit. I don't wear suits. I am well-groomed. I'm clean-shaven. Okay, now this is getting weird. And the only thing that's weird, I mean, sorry, if I was a well-dressed person, this would all make sense, but I'm not. Well-groomed, wearing a suit, but no shoes on. Socks on, but no shoes. And you look around and you don't see any shoes. And then you notice this. There are playing cards, a few playing cards near his body. Weird. You look at the playing cards, there's no special, they're not sending, there's not a, a script or something. They're just some random cards scattered near his body. All right. So notice we have all this evidence. What are the rivals you're considering? Now, of course, maybe you're considering murder. Maybe he was killed for his shoes. Maybe people just hate Jeff, so he's killed. But fine. When we start to look at the evidence, though, we have all of these rivals that say things like murder, uh... I mean, we have to consider suicide. I don't know why, but we always do. We watch too much TV. Uh, maybe he slipped and fell. Maybe this was an accidental death. Uh, still, that's a little weird. What about the shoes? Why is he well-dressed if he's exercising on the Bosky? Um, fine. We're looking at this. We're starting to list our rivals. And then, of course, we keep brainstorming rivals. And then we start to list our evidence. So let's do some practice on trace data, non-trace data, and then central peripheral. Let's look at it. First piece of evidence, again, the order doesn't matter, but please tell me the most important evidence is dead Jeff. Second piece of evidence, uh, in the Bosque. Uh, third piece of evidence, wearing a suit. Clean shaven. Uh, hair is well groomed. Shoes missing. And notice we could go on and on, the time of day we found him, how close he is to a path, what direction his body is facing, what is the vegetation around the area, what season is it, what day is it. You get it. We can go on and on. But for our practice sake, let's just look at the evidence we have down so far, just the basic obvious stuff. So we ask the question, why is it the case that Jeff is dead? Is that something a ri the rival should try to explain? Yes. We should try to explain why Jeff is dead. That seems incredibly important to the case. It's so important that it was in our implicit question. Now, we ask, is that trace data central or peripheral? Does a serious rival have to explain it, or is it just something it should try to explain? Obviously, the death is really mysterious and the most important thing, so that is a piece of CTD, central trace data. Next, Jeff is wearing a suit. Now notice, there should probably be a little background in, in our guts, and we should probably write this as evidence that what? Jeff never dresses nice. So that makes this a mystery. Now, is it traced out or non-trace data? Why is it the case that Jeff is wearing a suit? Is this something a rival must explain, or is it something it should try, but it's not essential to explain? You get it? It's peripheral. Couldn't the suit be purely coincidence? Couldn't I have been murdered and the suit had nothing to do with it? I just happened to be walking to my car from a, I don't know, wedding reception that was set up near the Bosque. Sure. Maybe I was just walking from my car and someone murdered me. Suit doesn't explain why I was murdered. Now, are there other stories where the suit could have something to do with it? Sure. Maybe I was murdered because the person was trying to take my suit and shoes. Fine. But you can explain the case. You can explain Jeff's death. What if I was just walking again after a wedding rehearsal and I had a heart attack? The suit had nothing to do with the case. It was pure coincidence. You get it. Missing shoes. Same thing. We could solve this case without ever explaining the missing shoes. But is it trace data? Yes. Yes. 
It's peripheral trace data because it is mysterious. We should try to explain it. The playing cards. Should we explain the playing cards? Why is it the case that there are playing cards near his body? Do we have to explain those? No. I could have just had playing cards in my pocket while I fell when I had a heart attack and dropped them. It could have been a pure coincidence, but should we try to explain it? Yes, we should. Okay. So what does that make it? Peripheral trace data. Now notice, a lot of the things that are very fascinating to the case are peripheral trace data. We might not be able to explain them and solve the case just fine, but the death central. All right. Yes. Do you want me to solve the case? It is so stupid I made it up. What is the story? Well, you investigate further because you can't figure it out. You find out that no, no sign of a heart attack, no sign of violence, although you do see that I have a head wound, and so you look into this. And what do you find? If you look carefully, you'll see up in the tree there is a playhouse, and the playhouse has clothing and women's <laughs> undergarments in the playhouse with the rest of the deck of cards. What happened? Jeff was playing strip poker with a bunch of lingerie <laughs> models, and that explains. And now what happens? They found he was counting cards, pushed him out of the treehouse to his death. Why is he missing his shoes? Because even though I'm cheating, I know enough. You don't win every hand. You find my shoes in the playhouse because I purposely lost a hand just so the lingerie models would get, wouldn't get suspicious. The shoes are up there with the rest of the playing cards. I was shoved to my death by a bunch of supermodels that model lingerie or something. So stupid, I'm sorry. Did anybody come up with that solution? Not a chance. Now, if this was a quiz and I gave you that case, you do not have to solve the case to get full credit. Full credit is by laying out and articulating the evidence and articulating your rivals and their strengths. You don't have to solve these weird cases I come up with. And yes, I will often come up with really strange cases because they're the most fun. You don't have to solve them. You just have to do the logic correctly. Now let's look at non-trace data. Non-trace data is evidence that we are not trying to explain. We don't need to explain it. It's background. But let's talk about some of the categories of non-trace data. Now to be clear, the most common type of non-trace data is simply background evidence. Background evidence that might help or hurt the case uh, for example, the disease tree that helps the truck is pulling it out story. Good. And so that's the normal case. But let's talk about two others that are interesting. For example, there is one kind that we'll call trace signaling non-trace data. What does that mean? There is, there is a type of kind of non-trace data that reveals trace data. In other words, it's special background information that reveals that something else needs explaining or is mysterious. For example, in the Jeff Dead and the Bosky story, what was, there was some background information that was a trace signaler. What was it? That Jeff never dresses nice. If we did know that Jeff, this is as dressy as I get, we would know that the suit is a mystery that needs to be explained. If the background of that case was, Jeff always wears suits because he has a fancy job and he's really self-important, then we would say, okay, the suit isn't something we need to explain. But for Jeff it is because we have trace signaling non-trace data that says Jeff never dresses up. Good. Another common type of non-trace data is what's called MO. That's Latin for modus operandi, meaning Sometimes we need some background NTD that tells us how things typically work in a certain practice. For example, there was a case where people found that there were a lot of brain injuries in soccer, and people were freaking out about this. Why would there be brain injuries in soccer until they realized that the MO of soccer is heading the ball and often bumping heads with other players, and so brain injuries are fairly common in soccer. But if you didn't know the MO of heading the ball as part of soccer, you wouldn't understand this. Or, for example, here. 
let's say that a your stereo is missing. You go to get into your car, the doors are unlocked, and your stereo is gone. Now, you don't see any sign of breaking into the car, and you're sure you locked the door, so you've got to figure out how did they get in the car to steal my stereo. Now notice, if you know that the MO of car thieves is to use a Slim Jim to rig the lock from inside the door, now notice, now you are looking for different kinds of evidence. You're looking to see if any of the molding or, or is bent or if there's scratches on the window going into the molding leading into the door. Because you have that MO of using a Slim Jim to jimmy a lock, you know to look for the evidence and consider that as a new rival. Again, Modus operandi is background about how things go typically in a practice. All right, that's enough detail. The last important thing for all of this, and the most important thing, is how to rank rivals for their comparative strength. Key. So, what makes one rival better than another? There's often, there's actually several considerations. So when you are going through, when you think of that race I made, you're trying to get to the finish line to be the best explanation. Well, this is how you'll need to rank your rivals and show how strong they are in comparison to one another. Because remember, you don't have the best rival unless it's superior to a great extent to the second best rival. So what do you look for? The best way to do this and be very careful is to ask five questions of each rival explanation and consider how well it answers these questions in relation to the other rivals and that should give you your ranking. First, how well does the rival explain the central trace data? Again, label out your evidence and see how well does this rival explain the most important central pieces of trace data. Second question, how likely is that explanation? If something explains something well, but it is not a likely story, it's going to lose some strength because, yes, your UFO story can explain all of the evidence of Jeff's death, but UFOs aren't a likely explanation for why I'm dead in the Bosque. So it's going to lose, even though you might fabricate some UFO story that explains it well, it's an incredibly unlikely story. Questions three and four are a repeat of the first ones, but for the peripheral trace data. How well, sorry, question three, how well and how likely does the rival explain the peripheral trace data? If it can explain a lot of the peripheral trace data very well, then it increases in likelihood as a diagnostic story. And finally, fifth, is the rival helped or hurt by non-trace data? Now notice, I said the fifth is the least important, but don't be misunderstood. Some piece of non-trace data could completely rule out one of your rivals that does good on questions one through four. If you have a case where some background information completely rules it out, you've got it. For example, let's say you find an 85-year-old man at the, at the top of the Empire State Building dead, and you would say, hmm, maybe he ran all the way up the stairs and died of exhaustion. No, he's 85 years old. The non-trace data very much hurts your story that he just climbed the whole Empire State Building. Do you get the idea? Sometimes non-trace data can absolutely defeat a rival's ability. Although sometimes some NTD can help. For example, again, the disease tree helps the rival explain why the truck is pulling this tree out. And that truck explains why it was, it was acting so weird. Finally, the very last detail. How do you tell if a piece of evidence is relevant? Remember, there's an infinite amount of evidence in any case. You could go to all level of detail. And remember, the key is, we're pretty good at telling what is relevant, but sometimes we're not. So we should give all the things that we think might relate to the case and lay them out as evidence if we were doing this in full in a real crime scene sort of case or a real scientific investigation of anything, theories. What do you ask? Any piece of evidence is relevant? 
if it has any effect of the strength of the rivals. If it helps or hurt a rival at all, if it makes one rival better than another rival, then that's how you tell that that piece of evidence is relevant. If a piece of evidence is irrelevant, it will have no impact on the rivals when it comes to how good of an explanation they are. You're answering those five questions. Irrelevant evidence will have no impact on what the rivals do, how good of a rival you have. The key, as usual in this class, is make sure this all makes sense as we go and turn to the examples. The examples should make it clear. If they don't, please ask me questions, send me questions, or re-watch those parts of the video that I've timestamped to make sure you get how we apply the theory to the examples. All right, so time for examples. 